Now let's explore the markets section of Capital IQ. So we're clicking in to market overview and we can see this market analysis. We can see here different sectors and the relative performance over the last 12 months. Then down here we can see a little bit more detail on sector performance. We can see M&A transactions by sector. So we can see where the most M&A activity is occurring and then drill in for more info. Same thing with private placements and capital raising. So we've got new public equity and new public debt issues as well. Lots to drill in here and really get deep market intelligence in a specific industry, which is most likely what we're looking for when we're doing analysis. So in the coming lessons, we'll take a closer look at some specific areas like M&A, private placements, and equity offerings, uh, as well as PE fundraising as well will be quite interesting to look at. But this is a great way to get your snapshot. And you can easily see, of course, which are the top performing industries and sectors and how they compare to certain indices like the S&P 500 or the World Index. And finally, as pretty much with all areas of Cap IQ, you can export this to Excel. So then you can start to create some type of industry report or just incorporate this industry data into your financial model or into your analysis. So here it is. Here's how it opens up. And you can go through and you have even the chart. You've got all the underlying data and so on. And you can reformat these charts to fit your type of report or your style of analysis. But this is a really great way to get this industry data into your model super quickly. A common area in markets that we want to look at is M&A activity. So if we go to this area, we can see here by transaction value and by quarter, the value of deals that are being done over time. We could look at the number of transactions instead of just the size, and we could look at closed instead of announced, and we can update that chart. So here is volume of transactions as opposed to value of transactions. We can see recent transactions here, the biggest ones over the last 12 months. So you can see right here, these are the top deals over the past year that have taken place. You can see here a year over year comparison. And you can see by sector here, you can see the most active sectors, for example. You could drill in then to real estate, which has had the highest value of transactions. And if we scroll down, we're really just getting the industry overview area of real estate where we can dig into industry news or key developments or what have you. So let's go back from the industry profile to the M&A area. So that's how we get a high level overview of M&A activity in a sector. But if we want to dive in and actually pick perhaps a subset of an industry or a specific time frame, we will go to transaction screening. And transaction screening is something that we're going to look at shortly as a whole other chapter, but screening is somewhere we want to spend a lot of time. Screening is one of the most important parts of Capital IQ. But for now, this is a good high-level overview of M&A activity. All right, now we're going to look at capital raising across a few different areas. We're going to look at private placements, private equity fund raising, and then equity offerings. So first we've clicked into private placements where you can see announced transaction values by period over time. You can adjust all sorts of filters here and you can look back further over many quarters or you can actually look by sectors or top buyers or what have you. So you can adjust the sectors here and you can adjust the geographies here. So it's quite a powerful tool for looking at private placements across certain sectors let's move to private equity funds raised. Here we can look at private equity fundraising activity over time and we can get a sense of where there's a lot of interest by going through some of these filters. So we can actually dig in a lot deeper here but we're going to gloss over this. I just want to show you this screen. If you're looking for capital investment you may want to be looking across all of these private placements, PE fundraising, and now equity offerings. 
All right, so here we've got equity offerings. You can see the sectors and you can see the time periods here. So you can see that, for example, financials in 2020 have raised the most money. You can scroll down and look at recent equity offerings. You can look at which sectors have raised the most with a bit more detail here. Even see the top underwriters, for example. And you can play around with all these charts and graphs. And then, of course, you can export the data, in this case, to a Word document. So we'll show you in the screening section later in the course how to build this from the bottom up. If you really want to drill into a specific area, specific types of companies, we will use screening to do that. But for now, this is a good top-down or high-level overview of fundraising activity. Let's take a quick look at the commodities section now. For many businesses, commodity prices are important for forecasting revenue or for forecasting expenses. So we can go and explore this area and dive in to find any commodity prices that we may need in our financial modeling. Let's take coffee as an example, Colombian coffee. We can scroll in and we can see some history here on coffee prices and we can see the forward curve there to see what prices are trending towards in the future. So that would just be an example of where you'd go if you wanted to get coffee prices for a financial model. And now you can look out several years and see that forward curve. All right, the last area we're going to explore together in markets is the interest rate area. We're going to look here at the yield curve. This is for U.S. Treasuries. And we can see, for example, the yield on a 10-year maturity is 0.87%. We can visualize the whole curve here, so that's nice. We can see over here interest rates in different countries. And we can see a graph that compares different countries here. Here's the Fed discount rate, prime, overnight rate, etc. Any of the interest rates that you may need for your financial model. And of course, since in discounted cash flow analysis, everything is based off the risk-free rate, this is the place you can go to get the appropriate risk-free rate for your financial model.